Welcome to Entropy Resin's tutorial on wooden surfboard laminating and coating. This is part one of a two-part series where we'll demonstrate how to laminate a wooden surfboard using our CLR epoxy system with Fast Hardener. Prior to beginning any laminating project, we suggest reviewing our epoxy mixing and handling tutorial for best practices in epoxy resin use and safety. Visit EntropyResins.com for more information. We'll begin by preparing our board for lamination by taping off the rails, dressing the fiberglass and trimming the excess, and cutting out and placing our logos. When laminating, a sturdy rack should be used that can support the weight of the board and the pressure you will apply during the laminating steps. Be sure to remove any sanding dust or dirt prior to laminating. This can be done using clean compressed air, masking tape, or a brush. Next, create a masking tape apron to protect the opposite side during laminating. Apply blue painter's tape around the board's perimeter along the rail, nose, and tail apex. This tape line will also later serve as a visual guide during fiberglass trimming. Additionally, apply small pieces of balled up tape or paper along the apron underside to help push it away from the bottom. Next, roll out the fiberglass on top of the prepared board. Be sure to even out any major wrinkles and make sure there is enough excess fiberglass hanging over where your blue tape line meets the rail apex. Also be sure to have clean hands during this process, as fiberglass can easily pick up dirty fingerprints. Next, use a clean and sharp pair of shears to trim the excess fiberglass below the tape line. Relief cuts placed at sharp corners or curves at the board's tail and nose will help alleviate any wrinkles that may come up in the fiberglass during laminating. Be sure to trim logos close to the graphic in order to prevent too much shadowing that may come from different types of acetate film or rice paper that the graphics are printed on. When placing logos, it's helpful to create a fingernail mark on the fiberglass aligned with the stringer. That way you can roll back the fiberglass when placing your logos and then keep it well aligned when you roll it back. Now we're ready to mix resin, place the logos, and laminate the board. We refer you to our mixing and handling tutorial for best practices on measuring exact mix ratios and proper mixing technique when using our systems. After the resin is well mixed at the proper mix ratio, you'll have roughly 20 to 30 minutes at normal room temperatures of 72 degrees Fahrenheit or 22 degrees Celsius to apply the resin and get most of it out of the cup before it gets too hot or too gelled to handle. This is also known as pot life or gel time. Once the resin is out of the cup, you'll have plenty of working time, roughly 30 to 40 minutes to apply the resin and move it around the board. When applying logos, first wet out the board surface. Then place the logo and use a plastic spreader to push out any trapped bubbles on the underside of the acetate film or rice paper that the logo is printed on. Roll back the fiberglass over the logos and begin laminating the rest of the board. We'll begin by pouring resin slowly down the middle of the board, wetting the flat areas first and leaving the rails last. We pour the resin slowly down the length of the board while following with a hard plastic spreader or squeegee and spreading the resin slowly with even pressure. We use steady passes with the spreader moving in a tip to tail direction only without a lot of quick side to side movements. 
Also take note on the angle with which we are holding the spreader. This leaves plenty of resin to soak into the fiberglass on its own, as epoxy will soak into the fiberglass and doesn't need to be worked in. In fact, overworking the epoxy can create too many air bubbles in the resin and cause a weak lamination and cloudiness. By starting at the center and working our way out to the rails and pulling our spreader longitudinally, we create tension in the fiberglass in a uniform direction, which helps prevent wrinkles in our lamination and gives the strongest lamination possible. Once the flat areas are wet out, we then wet out our rails by dividing the board into four quadrants. Pour a bead of resin along the rail line of each quadrant and slowly push the resin over the rail edge and into the fiberglass. Again, we work from the center of the rail out toward the nose or tail. Check the fiberglass for any dry spots and be sure to go back and wet out those dry spots with a little bit of resin and push it into the fiberglass. Also make sure that you wet the fiberglass below where the tape line meets the board so that you have a fully wet lamination. Once the flats and rails have been completely wet out, the epoxy should have had enough time to fully saturate the fiberglass. With the same motion and direction of the plastic spreader, go back and pull the excess resin off the flats first and move out towards the rails, leaving the fiberglass texture visible but not too dry. If you see air bubbles under the fiberglass, you'll know that you've pulled it too hard. At this point, excess resin should be wiped off the spreader with each pass and not further spread around the board. Work the excess resin out and down the rails past the tape line, again making sure that the wet fiberglass is touching the board underneath. A properly laminated board should look completely wet out, with the texture of the fiberglass visible and not too many shiny puddles of resin left behind. When laminating wooden surfboards, knots and holes in the wood grain can sometimes pull in resin, leaving behind air bubbles that will get trapped around the fiberglass. Be sure to backfill any air bubbles with resin before the lamination has set. At 72 degrees Fahrenheit, CLR resin with fast hardener will usually give a tack free time of 3 to 3.5 three hours. After the resin has fully set and is dry, you can go back and trim off the excess fiberglass at the tape line. The resin should be dry to the touch but still flexible so that it is easy to cut with a razor blade. With a clean and sharp razor blade, trim the excess glass at the tape line where it meets the board. Use even pressure and try not to push too hard into the wood. If the resin is still flexible enough, this should be easy to achieve with medium pressure. Pull the tape and excess fiberglass off the board. Although not fully cured, the resin should be sandable after about 7 to 8 hours at 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a sanding block and sandpaper, sand down the cut line left behind by the tape. You can repeat this entire process to laminate the other side of the board. 